because I told you that there were two different yes. routes we could get to artificial general intelligence, and one scares the yes. TVs out of me, uh, which is this one where we build something, we just say bigger neural networks, ever more hardware, and yes. just train the heck out of more data, and poof, now it's very powerful. Um, that, I think, is the, the most unsafe and reckless approach. The alternative to that is the intelligent, intelligible intelligence approach instead, where we uh, say, Neural networks is just a tool to this, like for the first step to get the intuition. But then we're going to spend also serious resources sources on uh, other AI techniques for demystifying this black box and figuring out what it's actually doing so we can convert it into something that's equally intelligent, but that we actually understand what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can even prove theorems about it that like, this car here will never be hacked when it's driving because here's a proof. Uh, there is a whole science of this. It doesn't work for neural networks that are big black boxes, but it works well in more tr tr certain other kinds of codes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that approach, I think, is much more promising. That's exactly why I'm working on it, frankly, not just because I think it's cool for science, but because I think the more we understand I mean, these systems, the better the chances that we can make them do the things that are good for us that are actually intended, not unintended. So you think it's possible to prove things about something as complicated as a neural network? That's the hope? Well, ideally, I mean, there's no reason it has to be a neural network in the end either, right? Like right. we discovered Newton's laws of gravity with a neural network in Newton's head. Yes. But that's not the way it's programmed into the navigation system of Elon Musk's rocket anymore. Right. It's written in C++ or I don't know what language he uses exactly. Yeah, and then there are software tools called symbolic verification. DARPA and the U.S. Uh, and military has done a lot of really great research on this because they really want to understand that when they build weapon systems, they don't just go fire at random or malfunction, right? And um, there is even a whole operating system called Cell Three that's been developed by a DARPA grant where you can actually mathematically prove that this thing can never be hacked. Uh, wow. It, I w one day, I hope that will be something you can say about the OS that's running on our laptops too. As you know, <laughs> we're not there, but I think we should be ambitious, frankly. Yeah. And and if we can use machine learning to help do the proofs and so on as well, right? Then it, it's much easier to verify that a proof is correct than to come up with a proof in the first place. That's really the core idea here. If I, someone I, comes on your on your podcast and says they they proved the Riemann hypothesis or some new sensational new theorem, mm -hmm. it's not it's much easier for someone else take some smart grad math grad students to check oh there's an error here on equa mm -hmm. in equation five or this really checks out than it was to discover the proof. Yeah, although some of those proofs are pretty complicated, but yes, it's still nevertheless much easier to uh, to verify the proof. I love the optimism. You know, we kind of, even with the security of systems, there's a kind of cynicism that pervades people who think about this, which is like, oh, it's hopeless. I mean, in the same sense, exactly like you're saying when you don't know works, oh, it's hopeless yeah. to understand what's happening. Uh, with security, people are just like, well, it's always going, there's always going to be um, attack vectors yeah. and like uh, ways, ways to attack the system. But you're right, we're just very new with these computational systems. We're new with these intelligent systems and, and it's not out of the realm of possibility. Just like people didn't understand the movement of the stars and the planets and so on. Yeah. It, it's, it's entirely possible that like within, hopefully soon, but it could be within a hundred years, yeah. we start to have an obvious like laws of gravity about intelligence. Yeah. And uh, uh, God forbid about consciousness too. That that one is <laughs> agreed. You know, I think um, of course, if you're selling computers that get hacked a lot, that's in your interest as a company. That people think it's impossible to make it safe, so you know, nobody's going to get the idea of suing you. But I want to really inject optimism here. It the, there it, it's it's absolutely possible yeah. to do to much better than we're doing now, and you know. Your laptop does so much stuff. You don't need the music player to be super safe in your in your future self-driving car, right? Um, if someone hacks it and starts playing music you don't like, 
the world won't end. But what you can do is you can break out and say that the drive computer that mm -hmm. controls your safety must be completely physically decoupled entirely from the entertainment system. And it must physically be such that it can't take on over the air updates while you're driving. And it can be, it can have, it's not that it can have ultimately a sort some operating system on it, which is symbolically verified and proven uh, that, that it's always going to do what it's going to, what it's supposed to do. Right. And we can basically have, and companies should take that attitude. They should look at everything they do and say, what are the few systems in our, in our company that threaten the whole life of the company if they get hacked, you know, and have the highest standards for them. And then they can save money by going for the El Cheapo, poorly understood stuff for the rest, you know. This this is very feasible, I think.